Meanwhile, as we watch Dorian, and it continues to barrel towards Puerto Rico, the Trump administration is diverting $271 million in disaster relief funds for immigration enforcement at our southern border. The move is sparking backlash from some top Democrats. It is time for our headliner, Hogan Gidley, White House Deputy Press Secretary, joins me on set now in our nation's capital. Nice to have you here this morning, Hogan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad you're in town. Yeah, good morning. So the president's taking a lot of heat for this decision to divert these funds to the border at the beginning of hurricane season. Right. Is this a good move? The Democrats know that this money uh, isn't being diverted from anything that can be used for recovery efforts or preparedness efforts. They know that. So this is a flat out lie. And if the media is reporting it and continues to do so this way, they either haven't got to the conclusion of the fact that this pot of money can't be used for recovery efforts or they know it and they're misreporting it, misrepresenting it intentionally. And that obviously is problematic. This president has given billions of dollars to Puerto Rico, Florida, Texas, South Carolina, anywhere that's faced one of these damaging storms. He wants the American people to be back on their feet. And that's why he does it. I know you asked, will it ever end when talking about those right. funds that go to Puerto Rico? Democrats are calling this cruel. Uh, Chuck Schumer took this on in a statement on the money, money getting diverted and, and wrote this. The Trump administration's plan to divert money away from FEMA at the start of hurricane season continue to continue continue its efforts to separate and jail migrant families is backwards and cruel. Taking these critical funds from disaster preparedness and recovery efforts threatens lives and weakens the government's ability to help Americans in the wake of natural disasters. Your response uh, uh, to that? Look, I'll tell you what's cruel and I'll tell you what puts people's lives in danger. When local politicians in Puerto Rico misuse taxpayer funds. The money we sent down there, we now know. Several on the ground have been indicted uh, for misusing that money, giving it to politicians as bonuses, watching that food rot in the ports. The water went bad. The president has done everything in his power to make sure that the people of Puerto Rico are prepared for this next storm, and they're still re rebuilding from the last one. It's because of the billions of dollars we've sent down there. His heart goes out to them. He said it many times. Back-to-back -back hurricanes. Just a year ago, it was a very a horrific situation down there. The president moved heaven and earth to try and help them rebuild. But Democrats playing politics, they know, Chuck Schumer knows this pot of money can't be used for hurricane recovery or preparedness. He's telling a flat out lie. Here's the San Juan mayor. We mayor. are not going to be concerned by, frankly, his, his, his behavior, his lack of understanding. And uh, it, it is ludicrous. 3,000 Puerto Ricans did not open their eyes this morning because this racist man did not have it within him to do his job. So get out of the way, President Trump, and let people that can do the job get the job done. These two have been engaged in a war of words right. for quite some time now, saying get out of the way to President Trump. So what role does he see that he can play, especially when it comes to accountability of those funds that continue to flow there? Well, listen, that's a local issue, as you know. The federal dollars that went down there were misused. They were abused. We pointed this out, that the territory was in serious trouble because of the local politicians and what they'd done uh, in propping up their own uh, bank accounts as opposed to helping the people people of Puerto Rico. The fact is, we have FEMA officials on the ground there in the U.S. Virgin Islands. We're in constant contact with them uh, at the local level to prepare them for this storm and anything that follows it. But again, they all know that this money can't be used for preparedness or recovery, and they're just lying about it. They know that this president wants to protect the people. I'll conclude this with the president in his own words. We are tracking closely Tropical Storm Dorian as it heads, as usual, to Puerto Rico. FEMA <clears throat> and all others are ready and will do a great job. When they do, let them know it and give them a big thank you. Not like last time. That includes uh, from the incompetent mayor of San Juan. So that feud continues. We're going to continue to watch the path of that storm looking very serious and could develop into a hurricane. But the Resources, uh, the resources we deliver need to get to the people of Puerto Rico, and that's what this is about. All right. Meanwhile, you are fresh back from the G7 summit in France. I know you were traveling with the president. There are, there are reportedly some trade insiders who are talking about the president's harsh negotiating tactics when it comes to getting a deal done with China, and that could potentially work against the president. Are his negotiating tactics working, and are we making progress when it comes to a deal?
They are working. He has incredible relationships with leaders around the globe, and I don't understand this narrative at all. The president was clear this is the way he negotiates, whether it's the Guatemala Safe Third Agreement, the USMCA, uh, the, the uh, Mexico deal where they sent troops to their border. This president deals with leaders of foreign nations in a very good way to protect the American people first. He wants other countries to succeed as well, but this is about protecting America and getting the best deals for us. And you saw that at the G7 because the media wanted to focus on the amount of calls between our administration and Well, because and there China. was some confusion, Hogan. Well there, well, there was confusion, but they wanted to talk about that as opposed to the deal that was actually on the table that this president secured All right, so since because then, of his great relationship with Prime Minister Abe. Seven billion dollars for our farmers. Japan is now buying the corn that China said it would and didn't. It was beef, it was pork, it was e-commerce, it was wheat, it was dairy products. This was a massive deal between the United States and Japan, and the only reason we can make that is because of the relationships and the respect that the president of this country and Prime Minister Abe have with each other. So rewind to Monday. Here's the president and uh, the president in his words on on taking on uh, the Chinese president Xi and raising the stakes. Here's the president. Now, when I raise and he raises, I raise and he raises. We can never catch up. We have to balance our trading relationship at least to an extent. And they were unwilling to do that. And we'll never have a deal if that happens. But it's going to happen because they have to have a deal. They have to have a deal. So talking about the weakening economy there and how that is going to force their hand here. Finally, just what, are, what should we know today about ongoing phone calls, negotiations, and are we making progress after that G7 summit? We are, and the only way that we can even have this conversation with China is because our economy is so strong and others around the globe are struggling. China is a good example of that. The president does have a good relationship uh, with Xi. Uh, that's pretty obvious in their dealings with each other. I think he just but, questioned whether or not he was well, an, an enemy. Uh, well, no, but they still have a good relationship. They have a rapport with each other. They respect each other. And the president understands this isn't China's fault as to why the American worker, American industries, and American corporations have been taking it in the teeth for 30 years. It's the politicians of the past who love the status quo and didn't want anything to get done. This president wants to protect the American people. He wants a deal. But the deal has to be good for this country first. Final thoughts. Uh, the president also spoke at length at the G7 on the stage, uh, giving a news conference to report reporters talking about Iran, and he seemed to set an optimistic tone. What is next with Iran? Well, listen, he has been clear that he wants to have conversations with the leaders of Iran without uh, uh, you know, preconditions. He's been uh, very clear about that, and he was clear in, in the G7 as well. But the fact is, Iran is under a maximum pressure campaign by this president because of its decades' worth of malign behavior. It's the largest state sponsor of terror on the globe, and it used billions of dollars in cash that Obama gave them to prop up their terrorist networks globally. That can't happen anymore. That's why we got out of the JCPOA, and it's why we're holding their feet to the fire. Macron uh, uh, suggested on the stage, standing next to the president, that a meeting should happen in the next few weeks, will there? Well, he wants a meeting to happen. Uh, Macron does, and that's fine. No one negotiates on behalf of this country, the but president this president. He's always willing to talk to people, but sanctions are not going to be lifted at this time because we have to make sure they come to the table understanding their economy is crippling, their potential is great, but they have to stop what they're doing across the globe. Hogan Gidley, it's great to see you in person here in Washington. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for being here.